Please show up. Oh, there we go. Okay. This is not a talk for people who really know what they're doing. Learned on the go. What? That was my motivation. Uh, it's getting a little tired of not having anything to plug my five volts devices into. I didn't really want to, we didn't really want a full house system. We just needed enough power to get around. I do have a small inverter, 2000 watts is small. And uh, I learned a lot. And that's the main thing. And that's why. I mean, I don't like gas generator, the, the smell. Plus, uh, as I said, we don't need much power. Plus the fact that why contribute to what's causing the power in the first place. There's a company around selling generators. Now, this is now not news for anyone who's done solar and anyone who maybe has a solar. But I have a friend with a grid tie system and she uh, she didn't have any power at all during the day. recent two LDGs we had. <laughs> Is it pointing down? No one ever told me. Now he told me. How's it not? Try up here. And then that's the ah okay yeah that'll work thank you so much it's a good thing we have av people who know what they're talking about yeah oh now i can hear myself okay so there's grid trot tie there's off grid people are living out in cabins in the wilds without a without a service and they uh they don't need uh they need a battery plus the inverter and in my case, I eventually want to go for the hybrid system. You can run them either grid tie or with a battery and inverter. So when the power goes down, you can walk up to the panel and switch it, or it can automatically switch, and you get some lights and some power. I mean, you're not going to get the full unless you have lots and lots of, of panels, in which case, why are you grid tied in the first place? so you can sell your excess to the yeah okay so i started out with a small small from small for solar off grid 200 amp hours and trust me lead acids cheapest way most economical way to get started but boy you better be strong <laughs> <laughs> way more than i do uh, i kid you not getting them Getting him into the house uh, was a bit of a pain. So I started out with uh, a panel, hooked it up, and by golly, it worked outside. So I started with a pulse width modulated. If anyone wants to know what a pulse width, you shouldn't have to here. It basically needs the voltage to be higher than the battery, and it kind of limits the pulses of the voltage so it, it doesn't overcharge the battery. And I could not keep it charged. And I couldn't, rem I couldn't uh, monitor anything. So I went online, as one does, and bought a Chinese maximum power point tracking. MPPT controller. So that's what I bought. And that was great. It uh, actually kept the battery charged, but I kind of noticed it had a serial port. Mm -hmm. So what's the serial port for, I said. And I looked online and very little very little documentation, but I had the right cable kicking about that fit. I think it was an 8P8C or something silly 
something probably everyone with a Cisco router would be familiar with. It's 8P8C or something silly. Might be nine. Can't remember what it is. But I happen to have one. So I just chewed up the uh, other end, broke it open, rewired the uh, the uh, pins. So I had the right pin out to get me serial from S-R-N-E. I have no idea what that stands for. I figured it out. But what's coming out of it? Serial, like, what's the protocol? Well, the only thing I could find was a SRNE Windows program binary that someone had written. And it claimed it was something called Modbus. And I go, sounds like a 60s TV show or something. <laughs> so I looked around. If you don't have to read the whole thing, I mean, it's all on Wikipedia. You, you can look it up. But it's basically a cute little serial protocol originally built for uh, relay controllers of all things, like turning on and off relays and sensing things. Remember those courses where you had to do, anybody who's done embedded real time will remember the chemical plant? No. Anyone did the chemical plant where you had to watch the paint? <laughs> I imagine they used one of these, a PLC. And that's what it looks like. That's the format. That's also on the Wikipedia. So that's for the simplest version of Modbus there is. There's like a gazillion. I was going to throw a slide in from the modbus.org, but then I worried about copyright. We already got one copyright strike for our YouTube, but I'm not going to chance it. But it's, it's pretty simple. Now, there is an RTU uh, Modbus, uh, some software. There's a library available in ports but it's GPL, so I didn't want any GPL linked with my stuff. So I wrote my own, just, just enough to do simple serial ports, stop, start, Modbus. And then I wrote a little program that so I could query what was inside the SNRNE controller. And I couldn't figure out what, what, what was what inside the, you can read addresses from inside using the Modbus protocol. You could even write to it stuff, but what did the addresses correspond to? Like, where was the voltage standard, uh, amperage, whatever, all that stuff. So I reverse engineered it ran their Windows program under Wine and through some PTY, PTY magic, mm -hmm. I was able to fake a Modbus, mm -hmm. like fake the SRNE and, mm -hmm. oh, it wants to know this address and that address is voltage and this address is amperage, amperage up from the solar cell. It was cool. And then, I, it finally clicked to me. Why is the version RNG and not SNRE? And I looked at it and I go, um, wonder what RNG could stand for. Yeah, Renergy. So I looked, I looked and uh, thought to myself, well, maybe RNG is Renault G. So I looked around for similar looking Renault G controller, found some documentation online that I registered for, and boom, I was able to get all the right values I wanted, everything I possibly wanted. This was originally done on, on all and mostly under Python, 
except for the C code, to talk to Modbus and get the values out of the Modbus controller. But now I could just pop it up using Python. Beautiful. Oh, how can I graph? I'd like, you know, these people have these pretty graphs like <laughs> showing daily. And I looked at it and looked at it, scratched my head. And then a friend online uh, mentioned this thing called Grafana. Grafana sounds like a, never mind. Anyway, so I had used, tried to use Python to, to do some graphing, but hey, Grafana did everything. Oh, beautiful. You know, I could see the solar charging. The red is the uh, red is charge level of the battery. There's actually some, uh, there's the array voltage in green. So you can see as the sun comes up, it goes, boy. And that's the array amperage in yellow. This blue is the battery voltage goes up and down at, it goes down at night for some reason <laughs> I don't know. and then over here because grafana allows you to but uh, <clears throat> I guess I stepped out of your frame or something no yeah anyway there's the state of charge grafana allows you to put things on the right too. So that was kind of neat. So that's the state of charge. And it goes, as soon as the sun comes up, the state of charge goes up to 100% or nearly. I thought that was pretty cool. So that was my initial system layout. I just had a heater in the basement. I put Postgres up here and ran Grafana from Postgres. And then I had that original web server running up on here. And this, this box just talk, just had power from the UPS, local ethernet, stop start Modbus controller, battery solar arrays powering the MPP controller, powering the battery. All worked great. I would have left it that way, frankly. And I would never have done this talk, which would be fine with me. But we kind of had an outage. We were without power for eight and a half days due to a massive windstorm, took everything out. And even, even the fiber to the node they, they have, uh, I think they're using Stinger boxes from Cisco. They have a battery backup in there. And th that battery ran out. So we had no internet. So I'll put the slides up somewhere and they'll be up somewhere, but you go ahead, photograph it, see if I care. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you, you get all weird angles. Uh, still had power. Could have had internet if the phone company, we, uh, we were able to recharge things. Uh, cooking was a bit of a struggle, but uh, other than that, we had some entertainment. Lights, walking around with those little goofy uh, mountain, mountaineer type headlights. Oh, that's where that went. It, Kind of, but it worked, it was okay. That's kind of what we were up against. Uh, windstorm sort of, sort of took uh, a lot of our infrastructure out. That's uh, only a few blocks away from where I live. That's, uh, I think that was supposed to be Madelands and, no, I can't be. Oh yeah, I know where that is. Just a few blocks away, so you can imagine. And in our neighborhood, we have a lot of trees. And of course, wind comes, 
trees do things like fall over? Well, a lot of parts of uh, Ottawa recovered power and we were, we're always the last, just about always the last because we've got so many trees, like broken, it was a mess. So, yeah, it was all working fine until, until this happened. And of course, I lost all that data because everything was on the one machine once the UPS uh, pooped out. I couldn't recharge as easily. I just, I just lost the data. And that kind of sucked. So this time I had like, I've got a, I don't know about anyone else. You kind of end up with this collection of raspberry pies kind of on the floor or on the shelf. This one wasn't doing anything anymore. I'm not, don't think it was, uh, I'm not even sure which R RPI I used on this. It might have been Raspberry 2, but it doesn't really matter. I rewrote everything in C, I removed the Python, made it. Uh, I didn't put the database on that Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to, not that silly, but I was able to re rewrite it so that every time it took a snapshot, it saved a local line copy. So I have a complete copy parallel on the two machines. Well, you see this with the, the database remained there. The Grafana remains there. Somebody should have handed me a laser pointer, but they didn't. But that's, so the Raspberry Pi, I get the solar status uh, from a small web server, and it does the snapshot in which it and back here. So it's pretty much the same thing on the solar side, except I needed uh, something to convert 12 volts to 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi. And uh, that seems to work. We get another one. We get hit again. We're always, <clears throat> I was talking earlier about climate change. Well, this is kind of what you're going to start to expect to see more extreme weather, derechos. We've never had derechos in Canada before. It was kind of a new and exciting experience. And uh, then again, we get hit with an ice storm. And I was saying that we had trees in our neighborhood. Our, our neighbor, Dodge Angola. Well, around the corner. I deliberately didn't put the address in there, but it's around the corner. And you can see a, a corner of there. It pulled down some of the aluminum with somebody with a laser pointer. I got one in my got one in my bag. I should have brought it. Well anyway, you, you see they dodged the bullet. But you can imagine what trees did to our, our power lines falling down like that and uh, causing a lot of outages. So yes, I lost power again. It wasn't as long this time, lost the data on my Grafana, UPS, but because I had a copy of the data on the Raspberry Pi, I just uh, SCP'd it back up, had to do a small diff to get the data I was interested in, only the new data. I didn't want to reload the whole database. And I have a little program I wrote, which takes this uh, format, CSV's format, and just stuffs it back into the database. Thank you. Somebody handed me a laser point. How nice thing. Once I figure out how to use it. <laughs> oh, I'll figure out how to use it. So, so, oh, 
wrong yet. Never mind. You'll have to show me how to use it. <laughs> Technology, what you can see in the middle of a talk. <laughs> All the right buttons. Red, 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 red. There we go. So I kind of did it there. Boom, the cover. And I'm happy. I got my data back. So for the time that I had the, the outage, of course, it's easy. So it's got the BSV file right there. Just copy it in. Ah, I've only got two more slides and we're only uh, 20 minutes in. Maybe I should have made more slides. So, as I said, this isn't a talk for people who really know what they're doing because you don't want to see what my, uh, my solar array frames look like. I didn't want to show them, but uh, it worked. And uh, it worked. And I like to go for a bigger battery. If I'm going to go with a hybrid system, I want the uh, life PO, the life PO4, probably the newer battery technology, because lead acid really, even with the deep plates and the marine deep cycle, and I want a little bit more power and. If that was 200 amp hours, weighed more than I did, took two people to carry practically. It was, I'm going with life PO4 or, or something. And of course, bigger, bigger inverter. And the idea would be that many people, what they do is they have a main, the main line power and then they have a smaller panel off to the right, off or emergency power outlets emergency lights and you just switch you say well normally the, the emergency power side is from the lines and during a power outage you drop i mean it's the same thing they do with the uh, commercial gas generators back backyard natural gas generators and really <laughs> 22 minutes in I'm done. If you have questions, I'm here. I guess you don't have any questions. No questions. What's it written in? What's a what? What's it written in? What language? All C. All C? Yeah, even the web server. I uh, originally had a, not sure if I was using Flask or Bottle at the time, but that, that was kind of cool. Nice quick web server, but if you're going to run a web server on a Raspberry Pi, I figured maybe I should. I wrote one from scratch. Uh, there, there is a couple. I looked at a couple of small, very tiny web servers, tiny web, or I'm not sure they're in ports like that. No, no, uh, they just, just because I had to uh, interface with the. Uh, Still had to interface with the Modbus, uh, Modbus code itself. And um, it didn't look that easy. And I don't know, for various reasons, I just, it's not that hard writing your own web server from scratch, really, just for what I was doing. Any other questions? Yes. Needing an ATS to power the, uh, the, the panel, but covers the handles all your your indoor battery stuff and that automatic transfer switch not yet okay. uh, that's coming Is, yeah you're going to use sorry have you found one that you like <clears throat> not yet I, I i was going to get an electrician in because we still don't have a garage wiring for any ev coming if we go for an ev so there's going to be a lot of electrical work and that's one thing at the same time, we'll put in a uh, surge protector for the house. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, you let me know if you find a good automatic power switch. Because, uh, I mean, I don't mind going down and just throwing a switch. 
it would be nice if it, it would drop out and mains power goes out and it says, okay, switches. Yeah, you. I'm a little confused about how many solar panels and how many batteries. Was it one solar panel and one battery? No, I have four of them now. I have 400 watts power. Uh -huh. And if I was doing it again, I mean, basically what I've set up is a is an RV system, really. But I mean, if I want to run my amateur radio, I can do that. It's, it's enough power for that, 400 watt of uh, solar. Yeah, but, but to do your house, you're planning on doing... I, I have a south-facing roof. Unfortunately, it's on the wrong side for my panel, so I had to uh, take it for now. And at my age, I'm not crawling up on the roof. I'm going to get a... Um, installer, yeah. I'll get an installer and put a few more panels up there. Uh, Proper, you can go like the standard RV solar array gives you 12 volts, which is kind of handy if you have a 12 volt battery, but uh, the professionals, like the, the bigger systems, they're now like going up to 48. And I think I've heard of 96 volt panels. I, like there's several panels in the series, but you don't lose as much in, uh, uh, re in resistance loss. And, uh, that's the way to go. The only concern for some of us is the uh, microcontrollers, microinverters. What they, some of the companies do is they put, uh, this is turning into a talk about solar anyway. <laughs> but what some companies do is they put uh, some of the solar panels in with a microinverter. They up the voltage there so they lose less power and they're more resistant to shadowing of one panel versus another. But most of them, or maybe all of them, or some of them have, um, well, they're very choppy and Mr. Fourier gets mad as they generate a lot of harmonics, a lot of RF hash, which most people, would notice because you're on cable or satellite. But some of us do notice. And yeah, I can see a few heads nodding. I would be very careful about how, how much you let the installer do if that bothers you. I mean, you don't need the inverter. I, I did read the, the micro inverters. I did read something about them not being, uh, all as effective as they thought they were. Yes. Um, more of an uh, extra information. There's a, a YouTuber, the Ace Big Guy. If you're in the comments, it's a story, it's not very crowded. But, yeah, but he's done a video series about his solar installation in Texas. And a lot, a lot of really good information related to what you're talking about. He has like a transfer switch panel that's like. Yeah. Eight transfer switches wide, so they yep. can move individual circuits on and off, yep. that sort of thing. Yeah, that, I, yeah. Exactly. It, there's so much information. I'm not going to need this much longer. Okay, I'll leave it here. Oh, sweet so David, guy might be someone you could enjoy. Probably. I, uh, I, I think you, uh, You learn a lot when you first get into solar, even if it's just a toy system, as I set up initially, you learn a lot. And that alone, well, maybe I could have saved money doing things with a little bit more knowledge, which hopefully now you have, if you're interested in setting up your own system now. So any other questions or? Do I, oh, I don't get to sit down yet. Yes. Any idea how much money you did save? On the I'm not going to tell, we're not going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> the SR, uh, the SR and the uh, controller was off of uh, all of one of those Chinese sites and it works, but I would strongly suggest you go with brand names. Uh, oddly enough, I do see the SR, S R N E 
brand being sold by solar companies now. So I guess it's okay. It's just um, what I don't quite understand is whether SRME makes them and Renergy rebadges them as Renergy or Renergy made them originally in SRME. More likely SRME copied the firmware and uh, <laughs> I'm guessing and, and the hardware, but it seemed to run okay. But I'm gonna need a bigger controller with more panels on the roof. I think that's only a 40 amp controller, 40 amps from the solar. Enough, enough. When you when you divide by 12, it's not a lot. And you think about 12 volt batteries, and then you have to you're trying to get uh, maybe 10 amps of 110, you're talking about over 100 amps on the battery side, over 100 amps, maybe 120 amps, something like that. I'm, I'm not gonna do Ohm's law on my head, work it out exactly, but you need rather thick wiring. And that's the benefit of going with a higher voltage inverter and a longer string of batteries. So you have like instead of 12 volt, you go with 24, 48, and I think I've seen 96. 48 is a nice voltage if you were in a uh, data center. I guess you steal one of their inverters. I'm not sure. That's what the standard uh, relay voltage for telephone switches. These have 48 volts. A lot of data centers used to go with 48 volts. It's a nice voltage, but then you can't use the inverter in your car. Also because 48 volts is unregulated. Yeah. Yeah. So you you want to, you want to do more steady. You're welcome to bug me, but uh, I'm still learning too. And I think we've I think there's time for a few more questions. Yeah. A friend of mine set up a, a, a system similar in size to what you did. Yeah, yeah. But his wife was very reluctant for him to put them on the roof. <laughs> so he set them up in the backyard Yeah. just last summer. And uh, his next door neighbor had solar panels put on the roof. Uh -huh. Turns out he was very glad his wife wouldn't let him put them on the roof because his neighbor says in winter he gets almost no power out of them because they're always covered in snow. In the backyard, he can easily just go and scrape them. So putting a panel in, consider where you're putting it and whether you can get the snow off in winter. Yes, yeah, so that's a depends on the angle. Yes, yeah. Depends on the angle. I do have a spray then. There's sprays for that. Yeah. I do, I do have a photo of my original system, like as you saw. Are sitting in the backyard in the sun, but we're north facing. So, and the roof is kind of peaked, but we have a peaked roof. And if you just slap the solar panels on the roof, you're ending up with the shadow. Now, if I put them further back, and I've, I've been thinking about that too, or thought about that. And then suddenly you have to have a battery that's outside, or you have to build a battery home that's warm because that acid can freeze and I'm not sure about life PO4 it can't be too close because you really don't want to run 12 volts all the way from the back far corner I didn't want to run 12 volts from the back far corner I would have had to use number zero wire or something that would have been or double O you know it, uh, it just it design decisions, design trade-offs, it, it's, it hits everyone, doesn't it? You're, you're always left with, that would be the advantage of going with a higher voltage though. 96 volts is probably almost reasonable from, a, from the back, my backyard, the closest warm spot. So, yeah, design decisions. Anyone else? I can sit down now. Thank you.